This is a business. They'll love you if you bring them profit. If you don't bring them profit, you don't exist. I have a lot to say about this subject matter. Um, but uh, let me tell you guys this. Before I even start, you have to understand that the statistics are working against you in this business. Nine out of 10 people within a year or two are gone with the wind, right? Gone. And you'll never hear from them again. The, the 20, 30 people that I started with, you know, eight and a half, nine years ago, I know I've confirmed for a fact every single one except for me is out of the business now. Okay. Not, oh, I'm still in and they're struggling. No, they're out. I just confirmed the last one like two years ago. He's out. And that was my last kind of doubt because I remember that, that meeting, that first meeting that we had when the broker said, most of you in this room won't be in this business in a couple of years, maybe one or two of you. And in my mind, I was like, that's me, of course. No one else here is going to, you know, right away, I would have stood up and been like, okay, you guys can leave now because I'm going to be the one who's in the business, right? But that's just, that's just my, my attitude towards life. It's like, well, if I say I'm going to do something, I do it, which I think is one of the most important things to try to activate in your mind when you do it. But that statistic is true, right? So you have to understand that from a broker's perspective, based on everything that we've said and what you're requiring, it doesn't make sense for most of them to invest all their time in all these new agents. Why? Because you guys have to make a clear distinction here between what we expect people to do and the fact that this is a business, right? This is a business. They'll love you if you bring them profit. If you don't bring them profit, you don't exist. It sounds cold hearted to say that, but the majority of brokerages and businesses run that way. It's not a personal thing. It's just you're not a valuable asset to me. You're a liability. I have to pay for the lights, the desk, the phones, the electricity. You're here using the space and only paying 50 bucks a month, but you're not producing any business to pay me off the split, right? So you guys have to understand the business aspect of it in the business mind. So now you look at our industry, which I believe is pretty much the only one where agents almost come in. I'm not saying you guys specifically. I'm just saying in general, agents come in almost like, with a sense of entitlement, like, oh, I deserve everything. Oh, I'm a new agent. You should just roll out the red carpet, right? And I'm, I'm bringing that up because that clashes with what I told you, right? Now you have one person who expects the world with nothing in exchange and the owner's like, okay, I don't like that attitude, but you know, the odds are 90% that you're going to fail. So what do I do? Then you add on, Hey, these agents are taking on a lot of new agents. You know, a lot of that management is split, you know, with all these people if they can, and they want to help them. Right. Then you add the other layer, which is all these companies are going to promise you the world. Of course, they want to fill bodies in, in, into the brokerage. You know how many, you know how many agents I've gotten messages from that have got, they got sweet talked by Keller Williams or Berkshire Hathaway or century 21. Oh, come here. We're going we're to hold your hand. They told them literally everything that they wanted to hear. Then as soon as they show up, oh, uh, uh, they'll, they'll literally say, what's your name again? Oh, Jim, there's your desk. There's your phone. Get to work. And now the agent's like, uh, what do I do? Okay. Those are some of the facts. Now, we're in 2021 going into 2022. The one huge advantage that you guys have that I didn't have when I started is this thing, this magical thing called YouTube. You guys can plug in and even go to my channel or Lloyd's or Carol's or Paula's. And I know for a fact, I can speak for a fact for sure from my channel. I know brokerages worldwide that have messaged me, owners, that they use my playlist as training for their agents. Okay. Now I'm saying that from, not from the position of I'm so special, but from the position of that's pathetic because they don't even teach sales. They don't even teach sales. Okay. Now. A lot of the stuff that I give from my experience is a lot of things that I had to learn out in the field. And that's going to be a big piece of advice that I give you guys. This is a business that you learn while you do it. Okay. You have plenty of resources within any brokerage, but most importantly for free now on YouTube, right? If it comes to recommendations, you have four EXP agents here. We're going to be as biased as possible. And we're going to tell you EXP decide from the position first of what you're willing to do. Because small brokerage, big brokerage, it doesn't matter. Why? Brokerages are franchises, guys. And you have to understand that. With franchises comes a reduction of quality control. 
My Century 21 was fantastic. I give them shout outs to this day, right? Now, I knew, I knew a Century 21 three blocks away that if you went there, no one even showed up. Training didn't even exist there. Same company, different franchise though, right? Depends on the owner of the franchise. So, you know, again, they can promise you the world. Some might do it. I might tell you, oh, Keller Williams is great. Then you go to the one in your location and it's not good. So it's one of those things where I tell people, look, look at a brokerage from the position of this is the icing on the cake. I need to bring to the table my willingness to work and learn on my own and be able to go meet with a buyer and seller in the beginning, knowing that like I literally would sit with my first seller. I was like, I know my script, but let's see what happens, right? And I got my first listing, even though I was nervous. But I knew that I had to go out in the field and work every day and make those mistakes and say the wrong thing to a buyer, say the wrong thing to a seller, go on the appointment and not get the contract signed. That's where you guys learn. Because then, you know, you guys have resources, even within your brokerage, you can go back and say, Mr. Manager, I went on a listing appointment and I didn't get it. And they said, blah, blah, blah. What's the response for it? What would you have done? And then you can get the advice. Now, you don't even have to do that because you can just go on all the videos that we've made saying this is how you handle this objection, this objection, this objection, right? But I would, I know I'm giving you a long-winded answer here. Yeah, I know I'm giving you a long-winded answer here, guys. But basically what it's boiled, boiling down to is your determination and your commitment. Y you can put me, rewind time back to 2012 when I was getting licensed, put me in any brokerage anywhere in the United States and I would still be in the position that I'm in now. Because you, your dedication, your discipline, your dedication to building your skills and the process and learning on the job is senior to market conditions, city, state, rural, suburban, urban, farmland, agriculture, industrial, commercial, it doesn't matter. It's more about what you're bringing to the table. Because I've had agents that have had zero advantages, zero training, zero help, and now they're making millions of dollars. And I also know agents who came in with everything given to them right on a platter and they failed out of the business like the rest of them, right? So although my answer is long-winded and maybe not what you wanted, it boils down to that. You have to look at the person in the mirror and say, okay, do I really want this? And am I committed to this process? And if you are, you'll figure it out. Because as an example, if you were to DM me, hey bro, I just knocked on a thousand doors and I keep hearing this line, this objection, I can't figure it out. That's a question that I'll answer because you're working, right? Because you're working. I won't answer the other questions that are like, how do I stay motivated? Give me a break, dude. Give me a break. But if you give me, I'm taking action question, I will take a half an hour out of my day to give you a good answer because that deserves a response, right? You learn on the job in this business, anywhere else too, but you learn on the job making the mistakes. Because if in the beginning you guys go to three listing appointments and you don't get it, and then you're like, I'm going to learn from this and you fix your mistakes, you'll become a monster after that and take 10 listings in a row. But the question is, is are you willing to go on three without having your hand held and not get them? Are you willing to go through that?